Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. In this video, we are going to look at running a Jupyter Notebook natively on your iPad using an app called Juno. Um, I will put a link to this app down in the description. I believe this app uh, might cost a few bucks and it also, so it's gonna be this app right here. Um, and then there's this app I haven't really dove into yet, but they had a deal for buying them as a package and so I was like, okay, I'll go ahead and get it so I can get the whole, the whole setup. And just for, just so you know, they have their own website, which you cannot see it behind um, this iPad thing here. So let me move this. This is the website, um, Jupyter for iOS. Now I know that iOS and iPad OS are like technically different things, but I'm running this on the iPad. And you can go through here and check out all of their different things. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Like it's, uh, I think it's a really cool way to be able to run some code on the go. Um, there, there's going to be certain things you're just not going to be able to do on on your iPad. Um, and whenever I run into those, I might make a video about them if they're significant. But uh, in the meantime, we're just going to go through. Uh, just putting together a simple Jupyter Notebook. I'm gonna do like plotting basic functions and we'll go ahead and get started with that. So, let me see if I can get this in the center. All right, so I'm gonna click on this one. And just so you know, I'm using the, I have an iPad Pro. Um, I'll put a link in the description, you know, showing exactly which model I have, but I think it should work on any iPad. It's just, you know, which ones have different compute power, right? So, and I have the magic keyboard that goes with it. So a little background on why I got that. Uh, you can fast forward if you don't care. Um, so I had a MacBook Pro. I was running research code for my undergrad physics research. And once I figured out how to multi-thread and take advantage of that, I ended up bricking it. So I, I ended up maxing out the computational resources on it. So what I did was, I was like, well, I want, a, I want a more powerful computer. Well, I wasn't gonna buy a more powerful Mac, MacBook Pro, because really it wasn't really getting much, much more power for the money. But at the same time, I didn't wanna spend all that money, right? And I, I wanted something that was mobile. But I said, well, what if I build my own computer um, and then just use my iPad Pro because I already had an iPad Pro that I was doing all my OneNote stuff on for taking my notes and running, uh, doing my homework and stuff, which was overkill for an iPad Pro. But I thought, well, I have this, this nice iPad Pro. I could use it to remote into my desktop to run my code from there using like a Termius uh, SSH application or using like Google Remote Desktop and just run it directly through the, through the remote session. Um, and then I found this running uh, Python natively through a Jupyter Notebook on your iPad. And I thought, well, hey, this is, this is cool. So here we are. Um, and yeah, so here we are. And this is what this video is going to be about. So I open up Juno. And it automatically drops me into a notebook. So the first time you open it, I think it's going to give you, um, it might give you something a little different. I'm not sure, but we're just gonna drop into this untitled one. That's the one it just made for us. And we're gonna get started just like we're in a regular Jupyter Notebook. So what we're gonna do is, now I already have this built out, so this is gonna just be me copying the code over, just showing you how easy it is. So we're gonna do import pandas as pd, and then import NumPy as NP, um, and then I'm gonna hit shift return. And then, so that's in and that's locked in, right? Um, and then I want to do, um, I wanna make some lists that I can uh, append with the X, Y ordered pairs so I can, so I can plot them later. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create these lists. I'm gonna call them F points. Well, I call them F1, so I'm just gonna keep it the same that way when you copy this, the source code that I'm gonna link, um, it'll all be exactly what's in the video. So F points, uh, empty lists, and then X points, empty list. 
Um, now, I'm gonna point something out real quick. So if you hit this, um, so down here, I'm, I'm covering it up. So if you hit this right here, it will give you options. So you can change between markdown, text, code, all right? And you can move the cells around. So this is how you can like move stuff around. And then you can delete a cell, you know, all your stuff is right here. And then you can run the cell through this button, like it says, or you can just hit shift enter on the magic keyboard, okay? So uh, we're going back to this. So then I'm gonna, I'm gonna do enter. Uh, now I wanna define a function. So I want to define F1 and it's gonna take in values of X and I'm gonna call the domain X and then the codomain. Let's, let's say we want to plot the square root of X, right? So it's gonna be NP dot square root X, okay? And then I want to return domain codomain. Okay, cool. Now my next function, I want to get the ordered pairs. So I'm gonna say, let's create a function, let's define it as get underscore ordered underscore pairs. And I need to, now this is gonna look a little, the inputs might seem a little strange, but you'll see why in a second. So the only thing that I want to use to get the ordered pairs is I want to know the start end, and step size for the range that I'm gonna iterate over and you'll see why. Start, end, step, and then we have our for loop. For x in range, start in step, we're gonna say domain codomain is equal to, now we're gonna call our function f1 of x, right? So x is gonna start at our start value and it's gonna step up by our integer step value and it's gonna end at the end value, right? Or, uh, yeah. So then that's, each time we go in this loop, we're gonna be stepping up an, an integer value, right? However, whatever the integer is we put in for the step. And then I'm going to say, all right, now that we have done that for x equals, let's say one, I want to go ahead and say, all right, you know that list, f1 points, let me append it with the value of codomain. So if you're not if you're not familiar with what codomain is, you can just think of codomain as the range. So you have your domain and range. Um, and the reason why I'm using codomain is because range is um, it's like a let's call it a protected uh, word in Python because range is going to be this range right here, right? So if you put in range, it might it might give you errors. So I'm just trying to avoid uh, using the protected names that are built into the uh, Python itself. And then X points, that list, it's a pin that with the value of our domain, sorry. Cool. And then we're done with this one. Because, so like up here, we're returning domain and codomain, but what's happening is inside this function right here, we're essentially returning those values each time we iterate through this for loop, but I'm appending them to these lists. So I don't need to return anything in the end. It's automatically doing it within the function. Okay. So then I'm going to say, all right, let's plot these ordered pairs. So define the function plot ordered pairs, and I need to pass to it the start and end step value. Now this is for a fixed, you have a fixed function up here, right? So you can think of this, this function as y equals f of x equals, so for right now, this is gonna be square root of x, right? So it's fixed, so 
we can set it up a different way in a different video so that you can uh, you can have the user define the function and that but that's a little bit more involved but I just wanted to do a basic setup for, for this time so the only thing you're getting from the user um, is going to be the start end and step size right so start in step and then we're gonna say all right get order pair now get order pair so it's got a little code completion but you want to hit tab not enter tab and we're gonna pass it start in step and then we're gonna say data is equal to so this is so I can build the data frame I'm gonna call it X is X points and then I'm gonna say Y is uh, F1 points okay we're gonna close out this little dictionary and then I'm gonna build the data frame now so I'm gonna call it DF is equal to PD dot data frame and then I'm gonna pass in data equals data so if that's a little confusing then we're gonna we can call this uh, points and then data equals points right so then um, we're gonna say DF dot plot dot scatter so I'm just gonna make a scatter plot X is equal to X and then Y is equal to Y all right now you can put there's other arguments you can put and you can really you know get involved with this we're just doing a basic one so you can see so I'm going to run this cell so I'm just gonna hit shift enter or I can come up here and tap on this and it's gonna run the cell cool now the next cell I'm gonna hit the plus sign we're gonna get another one now down here I'm gonna say plot ordered pairs and I'm gonna pass it let's say 0 28 step size 1 and then run cell and then there is our plot and we're doing all of this on our iPad right so if I come up here and I change this function let's say I want to change it to um, I don't know x squared minus 14 x oops don't forget minus 14 x plus 3 then this is no longer square root of x right so I'm just gonna call this y equals f of x and then we run this cell again and then we can plot ordered pairs again and it's gonna change our plot like that okay so again this is a very basic thing to do um, you don't have to define everything as functions you can just define it as some functional code where it just runs it all at once um, but I'm starting to get into this more object oriented type program well this isn't really even object oriented this is just defining a bunch of functions that you're calling um, but I'm starting to gear up to get into more object oriented programming so I'm I'm starting to build everything out as separate functions um, so yeah if you guys want to see any other videos about doing stuff on on an iPad or even in a regular uh, Jupyter notebook like in the, through the browser so to speak uh, let me know what you want to see let me know if you're trying this and something's not working for you uh, send me you know screenshots or whatever to request at athan.com and we'll see if we can get those figured out uh, if you have any comments questions or concerns let me know down in the comments and I will put uh, links to everything in the description um, oh also if you're wondering why I'm wearing glasses um, and because I'm inside well these are blue light blocking glasses so it helps block the blue light coming from the screens um, I got these from Gunnar Gunnar G-U-N-N-A-R they I think they block like 98% of blue light and they have a 0.1 or 0.2 uh, magnification that kind of helps reduce eye strain I'll put a, a link to that down in the description as well. They, they've really helped reduce the, the headache and fatigue that I get from staring at a screen whenever I have long coding, coding days. Um, I'm, I'm not make, getting any money 
to, to advertise this, but I will put an affiliate link like through Amazon or something down there so that if you do buy through that link, then that's a way for me to get some type of something. I don't know. It's not going to charge you extra for me. But anyways, let me know what else you want to see. Uh, we're definitely going to be getting some more videos um, with uh, doing stuff in Python and Jupyter Notebooks. Um, it's going to be a mixture between on the iPad and also on the desktop. And we're just going to dive into this stuff. So if you want to see something, let me know what you want to see at requests at Thank you.